Thank you for those of you that aren't sick. Of course, you need to remember to pray for those that are sick out from our number. And uh, but we'll see them back with us again just real soon. And we want to share some things from God's Word with you. And uh, the title of our message is pretty simple. How God guides us and how he guards us. And I'm so thankful that we have a God that's concerned for us and that he's constantly protecting us from this, that, and everything else. But I'm glad we have a God that wants to help us uh, by giving us directions. Uh, he, he's uh, definitely the best GPS that you can have when it comes to the things of life. Uh, we need to trust him and know that he wants to do what's best for you and for me. In the Bible, Psalms chapter 37, and I want to read a, a number of verses to you at this time. I want to read the first 25 verses of chapter 37. That's a little bit more than what we usually read. But Psalms 37 and verses 1 through 25. Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who pro prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he said that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bolt to cast down the poor and the needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bowl shall be broken. A little that is righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, and the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth that the days of the upright and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in evil times, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. Death shall consume and to smoke shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again, but the righteous showeth mercy and giveth. For such as he be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps, and this is going to be our text, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. And so as we go to the Lord, asking his blessing upon our message today, I'd like to ask Brother Chuck Gall, if you would, to the word of prayer this time, Brother Chuck. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful for your message today, Lord. Good pastor the word you want to say, Lord, open our hearts and our minds and we can bless each and every one that's able to be here today. We're thankful to be here. You will be open. You just bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chuck. And so we see here the person that God describes. And I, I trust as you look at it, you realize that there's a positive person and there's a negative person. There's a person that loves God and there's a person that doesn't love God. And so he describes them very clearly here. And as he does so, I, I think he makes it uh, very clear that he wants us to be doing right. He wants us to do good. And as we do those things, God can use us for his honor and for his glory. And yet it's a shame how many people are being used, if you please, by the devil. 
And when I say that, let me kind of rephrase it somewhat, that many people, uh, they blame the devil for some of the things that they do, when in reality, it's really them. You know, I'm saying that they're just bent that way. And many times the devil gets blamed for it. Yes, we can go back to the devil, that he is the author of sin, if you please. He's the one that brought sin into this world. But yet, there's so many times that we do things, we're not being inspired by the devil, we're just being inspired by ourselves in the things of this world. And so the person that God describes here, or the persons, it's very clear that he's made a promise that he will help those that follow him, those that put God first in their life, God will bless them. But he also makes it clear that those that refuse to honor him, he will also uh, not honor them uh, for the sins that they're doing. So to every man and to every woman who's trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as his or her righteousness, we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, that God emphasizes the importance that if there's any good thing in you, it's from God. It's not from you, it's not our tendency. But notice what it says here as we read this verse. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Isn't it exciting how God can work through us and how that God can do a good work through you? And God wants to do a good work for you. And, and folks, let's face it. How many times have you gone maybe through a day or something happened? And you went, man, I didn't do too good today. Or, uh, did I really say that? Did I really think that? And we look at it and we're disgusted with ourselves. And you ever been disgusted with yourself because of the things that you did, things that you thought, or the way that you affected other people or infected other people on the situation? And we've all had those days. But folks, isn't it a blessing when you have a day when you go, wow, today really was a good day. And, and you can look at it and say, wow, God really used me today. It felt so good being used by God. And wow, there's some people that got saved today. There's some people that got their heart right with God because I was right with God. And God was able to use me as his spokesman, as his spokesperson. And how exciting it is when we see God working through us, that we can impart the wisdom of God that we can share, if you please, the righteousness of God, that people can see righteousness within us, see us doing right, see us doing good, which again, is not our, our natural tendency. Uh, again, it's supernatural for us to yield to God and let his righteousness be seen in us. And then as it points to sanctification, and that's simply pointing the fact that God can keep us from sin and God can help us. And you might say, well, preacher, you just don't understand. I am really addicted to this particular problem, to this particular sin, to this, uh, you know, this particular thing that just has such a control in my life. I, I, I just can't stop myself. And God says, I can. And God wants to. And what a blessing. And say, wow, I didn't do this or do that today because God sanctified me. God kept me from those wrong things. And then as the verse goes on, it makes it very clear that he wants us to be involved in, if you please, in his redemption. I'm so glad that I am redeemed. I'm so glad that I'm going to heaven. And again, it's not because of my goodness, but it's because of his goodness. But I'm so thankful that I've got to share that redemption with other people too. And I'm thankful for those that, that get saved, so don't misunderstand me when I make this statement. Folks were successful witnessing for the Lord when we talk to somebody about Jesus, even if they don't accept Christ as their Savior, because God's the one that does the Savior. We can't save anybody. Now, we can share with them, and we should share with them, and we should have a concern for them. But if they don't get saved after we shared with them, we were still successful because we did what God told us to do. Amen. And so, again, as we look at 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, and again, uh, verse 30, we see how important it is for us to be that person that God describes. And the only way that we can be that person is by yielding to God. Realize the folks, you ready? We're all sinners. We're all sinners. There's no one that can come here and say, I'm no longer a sinner. <laughs> We're all sinners. And the person that comes in that way, he's lying, so he's already sinning, okay? And, and what I'm trying to say, I'm not trying to be funny, but what I'm saying, it's so sad that so many people think that they got to earn their way to heaven. And folks, don't misunderstand me because I think that we need to work for the Lord. We need to do what we can to be a blessing to God. And so again, it's so important 
that we put him first in our lives and, and that we want to do what we can to please him above everything else. So this is the person that God describes as basically a person that is sold out to him and that lets God work through him for his good and also for the good of others. And then the second thought that comes to mind is the purpose God reveals in Psalms 37 verse 23 that we read just a few moments ago. It says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. And many of you might remember, uh, in fact, our sound system back in the back uh, it was given to us by a man, his last name was Good Man. So uh, when he passed and went to be with the Lord, and he actually, you know, he asked me if I would do uh, his services for him when he realized he was dying. And of course, I felt uh, very honored and was pleased to be able to do it because he was a really good man. And so I was able to use this verse as the text for his funeral uh, because, again, he had a good testimony in the community. People knew that he definitely knew the Lord and everything, and he had a relationship with them. And Jay, you actually kind of remind me, you kind of built like he was, same color hair and everything. And, uh, but anyhow, he was a very, very good man. And uh, we appreciate him, and, and a number of his family members are involved in the telephone company and other places here in town. But again, what I'm saying, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. And how it's exciting it is to see that people can know that they're doing what God wants them to do. And, and that there's so many folks that don't know what to do. They don't know what to do with their lives. And God says, hey, I, I know what you can do. <laughs> and I know what you need to do. And let me tell you what to do. And folks, you read this? God is never going to tell you wrong. God's never going to have you do something evil. He's never going to have you do something that's hurtful. He's going to help you to do that which is right and be a blessing to others. So verse 23, again, God reveals himself to his children. He reveals himself that he wants us to be good men because, again, a good man, I identify with God, don't you? A good man or a good person, I identify with the Lord and that they have some sort of relationship with him. And we see that his plans, that his purpose, his desire is that that they're, everything we do is ordered by God. Uh, and again, our lives, we need to yield them to him. Surely we cannot think of anything more wonderful than that, to be labeled as a good person. And uh, I, I, I hear somebody come to you and just say, hey, hey you're, a, you're really a good person. Uh, or what, you must be a Christian because of the things that you do and the things that you say. And what a blessing that people can see the goodness in us and identify it with God that we must truly belong to him. So again, how exciting as we think in terms of a good man, as God describes him to us, that his steps are ordered of the Lord. And then as we think on that verse still, I see the procedure that God adopts. We as Christians have to travel under sealed orders. And again, God gives us orders and sometimes the things that he asks us to do, they seem strange to others. But when we follow through and do what God has asked us to do, it's exciting because usually quite often in this lifetime, we'll see why God did what he did, even though at the time we didn't understand what was taking place. So again, there's nothing to be fearful about when we follow God's plan for our lives. And uh, again, it's exciting to know that we're doing what our, if you please, our Savior wants us to do. And again, how sad when we have a day that we end and we look back at it and go, man, it was a bad day. It was an awful day. And how great it is when you look back and go, wow, it was really a good day. And I felt used of God. And it's sad that the other time when we have the bad days, we look back and go, man, I was used by the devil today, or I was used by such and such, or such, and, and then find something we're really honest with. So I was used by my own dumb stupidity, you know, whatever. Uh, again, how sad when people fail to trust God. We need to walk every moment of every day under God's leadership. Let Him work through you, let Him speak through you, let Him lead you to the places that you need to go for His honor and for his glory. I think also the pleasure of God's experience, is when I say that, uh, I've mentioned it in the earlier part of our message, again, it's exciting because you can look and say, 
that person got saved or that person really got something today uh, because God was speaking through me to them. And what a blessing it is as you spend time with God and go, wow, God was speaking to me today. I could feel his presence in my heart, in my life as he was dealing with me. And that's very, very exciting when we get to experience God working in us. So it says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way. Now, when I say that, isn't it nice, don't you, please God? Isn't it nice to know that? That you can please God? And, and, and it nice when you look back and go, wow, I, I know I please God today. And, Ooh, it feels so good. It feels so wonderful. But then the other thought is this, wow, God, that really pleased me doing that for you. <laughs> I, I enjoyed it too. You find yourself on the same page as God. And you find that there's a pleasure in serving God. There's a pleasure in pleasing Him. Wow, how sad it is the times that we have chosen to please others instead of pleasing God. And so, again, it's exciting when we see God working through us. Um, there's so many thoughts that come to mind. I think the times that I yielded to the devil and of course, I think the times before I was saved, some things that I did that I'm not very proud of and uh, embarrassing to even talk about. But what I'm saying is it's exciting too when I can look back and, uh, and get excited when uh, I get those notes or those phone calls or whatever uh, from, uh, if you please, my preacher boys or whatever, uh, those that God I had proofs of leading to Christ and I got to see them grow and see them become pastors and lead other people to Christ and then now watch their children and their grandchildren as they serve the Lord. And, and I think, what if I hadn't talked to them? You know, what if we hadn't invited them over to play, you know, pool of all things. We played pool and ping pong at our house. And, and that's how we got our peers to come to the house to, to play with us. And of course, in the, uh, when we were stationed at uh, uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base, we would have the servicemen come up. And my mom, she was so faithful. She loved feeding the Air Force men. And so we'd have sometimes as many as a dozen of them after church that would come to our house. And uh, it was uh, impressive because they were from all over the place in the United States. And many of them had been different places. And so it was exciting. So even though I was just a young kid, I, I grew up with the military in our home. And, uh, and again, my folks treated them like they were very special. And they felt that that's when they would come to our house. But what I love is I got to take them out solely. I got to go out witnessing and here I was, you know, 14 years old and, and they go, who's your friend? <laughs> and they say, this is such and such uh, in the Air Force. And, and they go, you got an Air Force friend and you're, you're, you're just junior high, you know, whatever. And they were impressed with, and I feel like they had all these big bodyguards. But anyhow, but what I'm saying, it was exciting as we got to serve the Lord together and see God do exciting things and how good they would feel. Uh, I remember one time I took two guys with me, and you ready? One of the guys, his name was Peace, and the other guy's name was Love. <laughs> when I introduced him to this lady, she had a set of twins, and they were on the same track team I was on, and I was trying to win her. Uh, she just said, oh, when she heard the day, said, we're fixing to have war here, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. She told me that one day I'd grow up, and I'd realize how foolish it was to live for God, and, she could believe I was going to become a priest. I said, I'm not becoming a priest. She said, you said preacher? And I said, there's a big difference. <laughs> you know? And uh, anyhow, she just pictured me, I guess, wearing a, a gown or a robe or whatever they were. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I tried to tell them, no, that's, that's not what I do, you know, and not what I'm headed. But anyhow, what am I trying to say to folks? It's exciting when you see God working in the lives of others. By the way, Many of our, our servicemen that we work with end up going to the mission field. It was neat because it was like our government trained them. So that they were able to go back to Germany or they were able to go back to Spain or they were able to go back to Guam or wherever because uh, they went there and when they went there, then they fell in love with those people and then they went back as witnesses. And uh, so I thought that was neat because they left the Air Force and went into the Lord's service, okay? Uh, but anyhow. It's exciting when you see God working in the lives of others and just doing miraculous things. And it's amazing what God can do and how that you can see his steps ordered in the lives of other people as we do what God has called us to do. And so uh, we 
learn again that's important for us to take it a day at a time. Don't jump ahead of yourself, but walk a day at a time and let the Lord help you. Because, you know, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And say, so well, yeah, I pretty well know what's going to happen tomorrow, you know, and, and you might go through the effect. But isn't it amazing how easy a day can become just something that you weren't expecting and how it can just completely change. And folks, sometimes it can change really for good and sometimes it can change for bad. It's just uh, amazing when we yield ourselves to God, what God can do and how that he can cause good to come from so many things. I think the possibility that God, you ready? He foresees, and that means that he knows what you're facing long before you know it. He knows exactly what's going to happen to you. He knows the exact second that you're going to die. He knows who's going to hurt you. He knows who's going to love you. He knows who's going to encourage you. He knows who's going to discourage you. He knows when you're going to be sick. You know, I, I just going to, he, he knows everything about you. He knows all the times that you're going to fail him. But he still loves you. And he knows the times that we're going to succeed for him. And folks, that thrills him. As it says here, he's pleased with that when we do what's right. But he foresees, even though, notice as it says, verse 24, though he fall. And what's this reference to? It's reference to the good man, okay? To the good person. It said that though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. Isn't it great that folks that when we do mess up, God says, okay, that's it. That's the last time. You're, you're out. You're, you're not going to heaven now. That's, that's out of the question. That's not the case at all. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. I'm so glad he's the God of the second chance, third chance, fourth chance. You know, okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to try to encourage anybody to say, well, I wonder how many more chances I could have. You know? uh, but what I'm saying is, he will not utterly cast them down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Folks, you realize what this said? We have a personal God. And, and so many times, I, I, I think we think in terms that God just sends an angel to handle our situation, okay? Well, God's hand is there to help us in whatever situation we may face because he loves you. He loves me. And you might say, well, well but there's so many Christians. I mean, how in the world can God handle so many things? Oh, he's God. <laughs> he's totally different. Uh, well, let me ask you this question. Last week we had Mother's Day. Have you ever known mothers to multitask? <laughs> it's amazing how they can be talking on the uh, phone and, and talking maybe to a daughter who's going through a heartbreak of some sort. And at the same time, they're fixing a meal, you know, or they're taking care of another little one at the house or whatever. And, and they're doing all these things at the same time. And going, wow. Well, who made women? God. <laughs> and believe me, it's no problem. God multitasks all the time. And so he's ready to help us. And I'm so thankful, as it says here, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Folks, can the devil do anything through God's hand? Can he pry his hand open if he's holding you? Can, can he cause the hand of God to be hurt so he drop you or whatever? No, that's not going to happen. Never will. Uh, by the way, Satan was created by God. And God gave him the ability to have free choice. And of course, we know what happened. Now Satan chose wrong. And even the angels had that same choice. And a third of the angels followed after Satan. What a tragedy. How sad. And yet God knew it was going to happen. But he still gave us the ability to choose from right or wrong. He didn't make us a little doll. You know, when you pull up strings. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> he could have. But he didn't. And uh, anyhow, it's exciting how God created us and what he did for you and for I. Well, when I think of this, are you gonna fall? And I can say, folks, I pray that none of you mess up this week, okay? I pray that you have a great week. And, and, I, and I do pray that way quite often. But uh, uh, how long will it be before there might be Something happened to my, my start thinking, I need to get home. That roast is burning. What's wrong with the preacher? Why is he preaching so wrong? <laughs> you know, whatever. 
Uh, and it's amazing how fast we can get in trouble in it. But what I'm trying to say, folks, again, is that we need to yield ourselves to God and realize that God wants to help us. In 1 John 1, 9, it says it this way. And I think it's so uh, important. I love 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse 9. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God's faithful. And when we mess up, he's ready to help us. And folks, it's important that we learn to confess when we do mess up. And, and you say, well, what should we do? The minute you realize you messed up, you need to confess, God, I messed up. Please forgive me, God. Take care of me. Don't let it faster. Don't say, well, I'll just wait till the end day when everything accumulates, and then I'll take care of it all at once. <laughs> no, we need to realize how serious our sins are and how it affects God, and how it affects us, and how it affects others when we let sin rule and lead in our lives. So again, what a tremendous verse, that he is faithful to forgive us when we're willing to confess <coughs> that we've messed up, that we've done wrong. Jude 24 says it this way. Uh, Jude only has one chapter, so verse 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, in that. So, folks, when you're tempted, that's not the same as sin, okay? Temptation, you have to yield to temptation before it becomes sin. And what I'm saying is, is very clearly that when that temptation comes, we do not have to yield to it. So, if that's the case, then we can have power over those sins that would be set us. And so he says that we need to trust him so clearly, because as he says, now the hand that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. You ready? Jesus loves you so much that he can't wait to present you to the Father and to, to please the angels of heaven. He loves us so much. Have you ever been in that situation and I can remember when I finally got the opportunity to introduce my wife to my parents. And to this day, I can still hear my dad, and Caleb can too, uh, my dad got Alzheimer's. And uh, the one thing, he always recognized Martha. And whenever Martha came into the room to, you know, to see him, he would immediately go, oh, Martha, my most beautiful daughter, my sweetest, the smartest, the most wonderful. I am so thankful that you married Jerry Ray. He sure didn't deserve you. Oh, you're so wonderful. And then five minutes later, he'd go through the same thing again. And then another five minutes later, he'd go through the same thing. Just tell him how wonderful Martha was. So, of course, it didn't hurt her ego and all that. You know, so, okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm very good enough. But what am I trying? But... I'm glad that no matter what happened, my dad's mind still always thought of Martha as being so wonderful. And uh, that's an exciting way to thought. But what I'm saying is when I introduced Martha to them, go, wow, she's so beautiful and she seems so smart. What's she doing with you? <laughs> but they, they thought, wow, I really accomplished something when I won Martha, you know. <laughs> it only took three times to ask her to marry me and said, okay, if you don't marry me, you're out of God's will. <laughs> that's what got her. Okay, but what I'm trying to say, folks, <coughs> again, I was excited when I had somebody special to introduce to my folks, and they were excited and saw that there really was hope for the son. <laughs> and God loves you so much more than I love Martha. Loves you so much more, and he looks forward to introducing us to what we have to look forward to for all eternity. So I'm excited about our wonderful God I'm excited about the prospects we have as Christians. And then I see the protection that God guarantees to us. Notice what it says there, it says, though he fall. And what I want to see is the fact that it means that God is protecting us because he knows we're gonna mess up. He knows us, folks, as I already mentioned. But he still loves us even though he knows us. And you ready? How many times has he protected you just today? How many times did he protect you this last week? How many times will he continue to protect you before we find ourselves in the presence of the Lord? And folks, he protects us because he does love us. 
and he loves us so much and he wants to help us and guide us and help us to see that we can trust him in every situation. Isn't it amazing we can trust God in every situation, even though he can't trust us? <laughs> wow, what an amazing God. So here we have this great truth taught to us clearly in the word of God that all who trust in Christ are safe and secure in his keeping. Wow, that's better than the president of the United States. That's better than our governor. That's better than the mayor of our city. That's even better than your parents. You may have good godly parents, and that's what that you know, I hold up for what I'm saying. And it's fantastic that we have a Heavenly Father that is concerned for every one of us, and that He wants to protect us, and that He guarantees us that He will protect us. And then the last thought is the power of God displays itself. In verse 24, it says, For the Lord upholdeth him with his have. Um, I think of my children through the years and even as my boys grew older for a long time they, they had this tendency that they would just want to hold that hand and uh, maybe feel really good a lot of times people look and go what's that teenage boy do holding his dad's hand you know? <laughs> it was something that they just didn't think anything about it and they were holding my hands because they, they loved me and they, they respected me, if you please, or whatever. And I enjoyed holding their hands because I knew they loved me, but I loved them too. You know what I'm saying? There's a unique relationship there. And it wasn't always because we were crossing a dangerous road or whatever. But what I'm saying is that God is always ready to hold us. That, excuse me, that God is holding us at all times. God is concerned for us and he upholds us with his hand. Literally in, in the translation, when you look at it, uh, again, uh, using uh, Strong's Concordance and so forth, it says, for the Lord puts his hand under him. If you go ahead and look at it a little closer, and, and that's what's referring to, that he puts his hand under them. What a blessing that God is willing to gird us under and to hold us up. How wonderful it is to be held up by the loving hand of God. And I think of his pierced, tender, and yet powerful hand. I think of the scars that are upon his hands from mankind that he had created. That the hand is the hand which guides us and guards us. What an amazing thought that we truly have a very handy God that's ready to help us in whatever situation we might find ourselves. And that he knows exactly what you need. And I know many times we pray, uh, this church, I, I think people know us as a praying church. And we often gather on Wednesday nights, we pray, we've had as many as a dozen, I guess, or, or more people pray at the same service. And that's exciting. And uh, uh, I enjoy hearing our people pray because you can tell where the heart is with the Lord. And for a long time, I'll go ahead and confess, for a long time we didn't let women pray out loud except among other women. And uh, I've really enjoyed hearing our ladies as they pray in prayer meeting and so forth. And found, wow, man, they're a lot more spiritual than us guys. <laughs> I didn't hear a single amen from any of the ladies there. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. But what I'm trying to say is God loves us. And God wants to help us. And you ready? He wants to do good for you. Oh, excuse me. He does do good for us. But he wants us to be a good person. He wants us to be a good man. And, and let's face it, you know, if, if you're doing something ungodly, people are going to like, oh man, he's really a good Christian. <laughs> when we're doing what's right, people go, if they do that, and they didn't have to do that, then their God must also be good. If they're that good, wow, their God must really be good. <laughs> you see, it's a, it's a testimony as we display a right attitude. And as we yield ourselves to God, it, it becomes something that it's an advertisement in one sense for God. It promotes God when we do good. What says, I mean, I think how many times, even my wife this week, how many times somebody would come up to and say, well, we used to go to church, but 
and, and then it would be something like this. There's so many hypocrites in the church. And, and one lady, it's kind of funny, she just told Martha, she said, I met the lady briefly, she just told Martha, she says, well, my grandmother told me that the church is full of sinners. <laughs> and my wife immediately agrees, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and she wasn't referring to y'all. <clears throat> but anyhow, well, what I'm saying is, uh, it is. But think about it. If the church is full of sinners, and then the other word that they use, the church is full of hypocrites, then where can you go in this world where there isn't sinners? Or there isn't hypocrites? And, and the thing about our church is, you ready? We're saved sinners. Okay, and that, that makes a gigantic difference. And why are we saved? Because of God. Not because of us or our works, but because of the work of God. That's what makes the difference. And folks, we may not be perfect, but we can strive toward that. And God can help us to become, the Bible refers to us to become perfect, which refers to becoming more mature. We can be more like Christ. Look more like our Heavenly Father, if you please, in one sense. Isn't that exciting? To think that people can see God in us. So the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Isn't it neat that God gives us a pattern and doesn't say, well, just you go ahead, you figure it out yourself. <laughs> you know, just maybe you'll get lucky. And God don't use that word, but anyhow. But what I'm saying, we know that word. And uh, how many times we look at that and go, man, I was really lucky today. <laughs> When we can look at it and go, wow, God was really good to me today. And folks, on the worst day of your life, you can look at it and go, wow, God was good to me. He was good to me. And yet we have a tendency to look the other way on and go, God, why'd you do all these things to me? He knows what he's doing, folks. And when we learn to trust him, then we'll have steps that will honor the Lord. And people go, Wow, that's a good person. That's a good man. That's a good woman. That's a, wow. So, where are you at in your relationship with the Lord? Would people say, wow, would your neighbor say, I had a state trooper came to our house this week and uh, I had a little bit of forewarning that he was coming and uh, so I, I hid Martha, but not. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I knew he was coming. And what it was is the young man next door, and uh, Brother Chuck, you might remember, he's the one who helped us with the piano. And if you remember Brother Chuck, he's the one, he literally jumped and said, you guys get away. And he just went ahead and picked the piano up and put it in the back of the, of the trailer that we had there. So anyhow, very stout man. Uh, anyhow, he's, he's really strong. Uh, but he wants to be a highway patrolman and a state trooper. And so he told me, he said, there will be a sergeant so-and-so coming by to see you. Uh, his first name is Chad. And he'll be coming to see you, and he wants to ask you questions about me. And he said, I hope you can say something good about me. <laughs> I don't know. Think so. He said, please don't tell about the wild parties. And of course, he was joking around and uh, went over several lanes, and I was hoping he'd be at church today. But anyhow, uh, his name is Dustin. And so anyhow, as he came in, he started asking me all those questions. And then he told me, he said, I went on the other side, talked to the neighbors there, and I talked to the neighbors across the street, and, all that. and he said, and you were the last one here. And I said, well, he actually lived on the other side. One time his mother lived on this side, and she lived, he said, you mean they lived on both, he lived on both sides? I said, well, yeah. <laughs> so I said, well, that's kind of different. And uh, so I said, which side do you want me to tell you about? You know? <laughs> but we went ahead and we talked, and, and he said, Basically, I'm getting the same report that he would be a, a good highway patrolman, but we want to make sure. So that's the reason we'll go and check with their neighbors. Now, if law enforcement thinks that's important to know what the neighbors think about you, and one is if we said anything bad about him, apparently that would have really affected whether he would become a state trooper or not. So, I mean, that's the law. I mean, that's what they do. They go to all that trouble because they know the neighbors know <laughs> what's going on in those homes, those houses. And he did, he specifically asked me, he said, you ever hear him arguing? You ever hear any fights? You ever hear him telling And he started going over all these things. And I said, no, no. And he said, do you ever come in drunk? I said, no. You know, and just, I said, the only problem I have is with this dog. This dog is always, well, never mind. But uh, that's another story. But what I'm saying is, he was being watched. 
And what the neighbor said about him means the difference between him becoming an officer or not. And folks, I'm not saying that what people say about you means the difference between you going to heaven or not. But it's a shame that there's many Christians afraid that, yeah, they're going to heaven. But when you look at their life, you watch them, you go, well, I don't know. Uh, if they are, they're sure not showing it. We're being watched. And I don't know if the state troop are going to come knock on my door and say, hey. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, God's watching us. And when we do what's right, it says he delighted in it when we do right. So let's choose to do right. This be a, a good testimony for them. In, in a sense, it's, was, it's like they were wanting to make sure that he was living the, the state trooper cold of character before he became a state trooper, okay? And that's kind of what he said, what Chad said to me. Uh, and what I'm saying is, folks, can people see that we're Christians? Would you stand to your feet as we begin our invitation? Lord, thank you for this time. We can study your word. We pray that you help us that we might be able to hear the testimony that was shared today that people could say, yes, my neighbor, uh, he's a good man or he's or she's a good woman or, or they're, they're good people. And that they can see that we have a good God that's living in and through us. Help us, Lord, that we would have a good testimony. Lord, help us to say just how important it is because when we do what you want us to do, it pleases you, but also it brings others to you as we do what's right. Help us, Lord, to see the importance of being a good neighbor. Help us to see the importance of being a concerned individual for others. Help us to always want to see people go to heaven, no matter how they treat us, that we want to see them get saved and that we would pray for their salvation and that we would witness to them or whatever we need to do that we might bring honor to you. Lord, help us to realize that being a good person doesn't just come accidentally. And it's not something that we do and go, wow, he was really lucky today because of this or that. But people can truly see that we're doing what you ordered us to do and that we enjoy doing what you call us to do. Or we pray that there's someone here that's never trusted Christ as Savior that they pray the simple childlike prayer so they could become a good man or a good woman, that they pray this prayer and say, Dear God, please forgive me of all my sins and come into my heart and become my Lord and my Savior. May they pray that in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. The good steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. People see you. Do they see a good Christian? Do they see a strong Christian? Or do maybe they just give you credit and go, well, they're a weak Christian, but I guess they are Christian. Or do they look at you and go, well, they say they're Christian, but wow. We have to follow God's orders. He said, well, I don't know what his orders are. Well, if you have a Bible, <laughs> the Bible's got his printed commands for us to follow. God shows us exactly what he wants us to do. First thing is to admit that we know that we're sinners. We know that we've done wrong. We know that we don't deserve heaven. also know that he's willing to forgive us and take us to that wonderful place that we call heaven because of what he did for us as he took care of our sins and the punishment for our sins we trust in him was Jesus a good man? oh yeah, no question he was a perfect man Folks, I can take a step further. He's a good God. <laughs> so 
thank you. What a wonderful God. Sergeant Chad, as he introduced himself to me, of course he had his badge there, he had his big gun, all sorts of stuff. And uh, uh, I said, would you like to come? He said, yes, I would. And he came in and he said, uh, I'm with the, the station there in Peru. So he told me just a couple other things. But he wanted me to know who he was. And then of course he went into greater detail about why he was there. And I was so glad I knew that he was coming though. You know, I had an idea that he'd be there, uh, a possibility. And uh, so I gave a good recommendation to our neighbor. And of course I made a neighbor promise to come to church. So I'd give him that good night. <laughs> Not exactly, but anyhow, uh, hopefully he will come. And I have invited him a number of times to the church through the years. So, but, uh, and we'll see what happens. And, uh, but again, uh, I'm excited that we can do good. I mean, it's so easy to like, just forget it, I can't do any good. But folks, we can't as we yield to him. I'm not going to preach again now, okay? We want to go ahead and dismiss in prayer at this time. And so I want to ask Brother Jay if you would word our prayer for us, Brother Jay. Sure. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for your Bible, your Psalms, and your promises, and how amazing you are. Thank you for guiding us in our steps and help us, Lord, to be a light and to live right in a world that's dark and, and uh, to be a testimony for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.